Hi, my name is Sarish Sudhakaran and in this video, we'll analyze the cinematography of Larry Fong. The goal is to break down his techniques so you have a starting place to learn more about his work. Larry Fong started out by making music videos along with art school friends Tarsim Singh and Zack Snyder. However, it was only after winning an award for the pilot episode for Lost, directed by J.J. Abrams, that Larry Fong came into prominence. After that came 300 and every other Zack Snyder film except Man of Steel. Even though these films have tons of visual effects, Larry Fong's cinematography stands out by not calling attention to itself and evolving with every show. His style is naturalistic and simple. Due to the large scale of the movies he shoots, he can't always get soft light sources close by. So you can see he uses larger sources from far away. Most of the times the actors are in the Rembrandt or split lighting style. For visual effects heavy shots, he achieves a soft front on lighting or paramount lighting style. Obviously he has to give enough room and lighting for the compositors to iron out problems later on. The contrast ratio isn't too high because with Snyder's films the blacks tend to be crushed in color grading and there are always multiple power windows drawing attention to what is happening on screen. Larry Fong works in LEDs and Kino flows into the production design and he also uses them as well as bounce cards as an eye light for the actors once the overall set has been built up. One of his signature looks is the harsh rim or hair light from the top side while the key is from the opposite side, usually in a split lighting pattern. He is not afraid to underexpose the actors in relation to the background, which is how a scene would naturally look to our eyes. The camera movements are mostly steady, either on Steadicam or a Technocrane, which is Snyder's tool of choice. Even with all the visual effects they have to do, they fight to shoot on film, usually Kodak stock. They shoot a lot of slow motion stuff, a Zack Snyder calling card, at 150 frames per second. They mostly prefer a single camera workflow, though for J.J. Abrams on Super 8, Larry Fong had multiple cameras running as well as having to insert lights where they shouldn't be to get the anamorphic lens flares Abrams loves so much. You can see some of it rubbed off on Larry Fong because for Batman vs Superman, he had Panavision create special coatings for his C-series lenses so he could get a red-blue flare instead of the traditional blue flare so it would blend with Superman's costume. Larry Fong shoots on both anamorphic and spherical, though the aspect ratio is almost always 2.39 is to 1. His favorite lens is a 27mm Panavision Primo, and he almost always shoots on Panavision lenses and cameras. He also carries the 4 to 1 and 11 to 1 zooms on most shoots. When shooting spherical, he exposes around the T2.8 mark, and for anamorphic he tries to shoot at T4 or even higher, so focus pulling is easier. Due to the visual effects heavy nature of his productions, he gets a lot of time in prep. For example, he had 2 months on Watchmen most of which he spent doing tons of camera and lens tests. He collaborates closely with the visual effects supervisor and production designer so the actors are shot correctly, and later on he sits with the colorist until the final DI is done. From beginning to end, he retains absolute control over the visual look for each film. Larry Fong also uses colors strongly, though I don't mean in a saturated sort of way. There's always a strong color separation between actors and the background, or between different parts of the story. On recent movies, he has also mixed color on skin tones for a more complex look. My favorite aspect of Larry Fong's style is the way he shoots night scenes. Every movie has a lot of night work, and he really has mastered the art of creating insane depth even by using the poor man's process if he has to when budget doesn't allow for large sets. You can feel the gradations and texture he's able to achieve in his night shots. Even with his dark silhouettes, you can see the meticulous detail and love with which he lights his night scenes. Overall, if you study the way he lights actors in day or night, you'll see he tries to achieve a naturalistic vision, maybe with multiple shadows because that's how a real city would light a person. He doesn't go for the beautiful for its own sake, which is very hard to do when all you're doing is staring at a large blue wall. I hope this brief video makes you curious enough to learn more about the brilliant cinematography of Larry Fong. The best way to learn more about him is to watch his movies and to read his interviews in the American Cinematographer magazine and elsewhere. If there's a favorite cinematographer whose work you want analyzed, let me know. To see more videos like this one, please subscribe. There are lots more on the way. 
Bye now.